We are back. Nerds are in business. Hello, everyone. <laughs> we have been gone for a little while, but we are back now making the nerd rounds. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, my name is John Pollock. I'm your host, along with my partner, Michael Deeb. This is the show where we nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Michael Deeb, did you miss me? I missed you. Oh, my God, dude. It feels like it's been a year. And Too it long. hasn't. I mean, it's only been a few weeks. It was last year. I mean, let's be honest. We, we'll make that obvious joke. Uh, but we've uh -huh. been taking some time. Uh, look, uh, a lot of fans, uh, like probably 20% <laughs> of them, of that's them. four people, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> have compl I mean, they, I, that was, was that the most common comment it wasn't that we didn't know what we were talking about or that our bids were wrong or that we're ugly or anything like that it was Negative. always it was always <laughs> about michael deeb's audio and look in his defense it had nothing to do with him he we bought the best equipment we went out and got all this yeah. stuff and it just it was the system we were using and uh we are happy to be back and uh look we've been troubleshooting this studio for you guys and we hope it works and we hope you guys enjoy the yeah. show as much as we uh enjoy making it i i missed it how about you deep i've i've missed oh doing this. dude i i miss hanging out with you, you know, the, the big treat for me is uh moving back home to san francisco which i'm not happy about uh, I've made that evidently clear that if I can find any way to weasel my way back to Clark County, I will. Um, but the, the biggest thing about moving back here is that we've gotten to do the show and I feel like I'm still in touch with everybody, even though I don't get to go on the, the Overton run and the, the do Sandy with you on the weekend and prompt you notice and that I haven't driven Rami's 993 RS at this point. So, you know, but at least we get to do the show taking a break for the holidays. Um, I mean, it was nice to give it a rest for a second, but I missed doing the show, and here we go. We got um, a new format, which I'm excited about, and evidently my sound is a lot better. I would like to point out that the problem was in JP's soundboard and not my fancy microphone. So. Yeah. Uh, to be <laughs> supposedly, we'll see what happens uh, if this yeah. recording actually works out. Uh, folks, this is not the first time we've tried to come back. Uh, we would have been back <laughs> weeks ago if we could figure out all the buttons on this thing. Uh, yeah. We're not smart. Okay, so there it is. Everybody already knows that. Let's get to the cars because that's why you're here. We find the most interesting car of the day. We make a prediction about that car's auction. Uh, Will it fail to sell? Will it meet reserve? Is there reserve? How much will that car get bid to? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like the price is right, only with an enthusiast car. At the end uh, of our predictions, we go into the future in this very episode, and we will tell you exactly what happened with that car's results. So stick around. At the end of the episode, we'll show you uh, about the results, and that's often more interesting than the prediction. Uh, so uh, play along with us as we're talking about the car uh if you have any ideas or insights or things that you think we missed let us know in the comments we love hearing from you guys uh and i try to i try to respond to everyone uh so all of our uh great fans that have been uh, hanging around with us ross and i mean there's buddha and all it's great people that have been uh, watching the show and uh commenting we miss you guys we're back uh, we're back at it, and uh, so uh, before we get to today's car, though, we do want to shout oh, out yeah. Uh, yeah. to our good new friends. For, yeah. New for 2023. We we are officially gainfully employed. <laughs> Something like that. It's a uh, sub-minimum wage, but hey, we are big friends with uh, the folks over at God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. We mm -hmm. welcome them uh, into Nerd Nation. They're part of the Nerd Herd, yeah. uh, and they are supporting this program, and and uh, look, we talk about auction cars all the time. It's kind of a pain in yeah. the butt to find the car you want on one of these auctions. And when you do, you got to pay through the nose. The, the auctions aren't really where you get the best deals. It's where you pay the most. Uh, if you want to find the car that you really want uh, and you don't want to wait around for an auction, you don't want to mess with all the auction stuff, just go to God and Porsche, see what they got or give Steve a call yeah. or whatever JP, they'll find you the car. JP, how many cars have you bought from Godden? 
That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to. I'd have to add them up, right? In in three years, I bought two cars from Godden, and I sold them one car, which Jim, rest mm. his soul, was not happy about. But uh, <laughs> I did sell them a car, and they did make money off it. It just yeah. it did not go down the way he would have approved. Um, apparently, uh, it happened when he wasn't looking. But mm. um, I bought I bought a classic Carrera um, that you encouraged me, basically told me I had to buy it, um, and I bought a Cayenne diesel, which is probably the smartest decision I've ever made. Um, and then I sold them my GT3 RS because I needed the money to pay for my wedding. But uh, I imagine over the years, you probably bought at least a half. I would guess you've bought a half dozen cars from Godin. No, I don't know about that many, but uh, we'll save that for another episode. Uh, let's get all to right, today's car. Um, all right. So what is today's car, Michael Deeb? The, I Look, you know me. It's funny. I'm not an Audi fan. <laughs> uh, spoiler. Well, but I have yeah. an Audi, basically. I have a Macan, which is basically an Audi. An Audi. That's uh, an Audi. And this one would probably beat the doors off of mine. So what are we oh talking about God. here? Look at this thing. Yeah. Wow. A is for Audi. And uh, without further ado, on Bring a Trailer, we're looking at a 2008 Audi RS4. Now, listen, before you everybody flies off the handle, I am not billing this car as a sports car or a replacement for your air-cooled Porsche. That's not what this is. But if you need a four-door sedan, and if you like driving a manual transmission uh, as your daily driver, you could do a lot worse than this car offered to us out of Tracy, California, and closing in about you know three days from now. This car has just 38,000 miles on the odometer. It's in a very lively Imola yellow paint job. It's got black Napa leather, and uh, I actually really like those... Um, what are they, 19-inch split, uh, split poke wheels in sort of that titanium color. Uh, JP, when you zoom in on the uh, some of these photos, this car has the night package, which um, with Audi, it means there's no chrome on the car. So the grill surround and the window surrounds are all blacked out to give it, you know, arguably a tougher, more butch look. Uh, but this car is really nice, um, JP. One, the yellow's pretty rare on this car. Two, it's got real low miles at 38,000 miles this car doesn't even have 40,000 miles on the odometer and we're talking about a car that's now 14 years old going on 15 years um the other thing is one of the owners of this car lowered it put a single mass flywheel on there uh, i think there's a little ecu flash so this has some cool equipment on it that i don't think is going to detract from the value but would certainly enhance it for the person who really likes to drive and somebody like you or me would really appreciate the things that were done to this car because I think they're things we would do for ourselves. The car looks to be in really nice condition. It's got a short shifter, heated seats, flat bottom steering wheel, Audi's early navigation, um, uh, Bose sound system. I mean, this car really has all the goods, but the real jewel of this car besides the Quattro is the 4.2 liter V8. That's the same motor that was in the uh, first generation Audi R8. It's got about 420 horsepower and 320 pound foot of torque. It's a rev monster. It's got plenty of torque. And when you drive this car, when you release the clutch and dip into that throttle, that's what makes this car so fun. It sounds good. It revs like crazy. Now, Audi inexplicably hung the motor way out over the front axle. As such, this car is super front heavy. They do not handle. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's it's lowered and it, it can go around a turn, but this is not a track car. Uh, but it's, I don't think it's meant to be a track car. I just think as a boulevard cruiser, this is a super fun car to drive. I mean, JP, this is essentially a German muscle car, uh, but it's got beautiful appointments, and I just think um, these cars are really neat. The other interesting thing is we know that Audis in general – by depreciation, fall off a cliff. You know, when a car is two and three years old, and God forbid, out of warranty, Audis aren't worth anything. But these cars in Audis history have been a real bright spot. They bring really good money. I think this car has two things going for it. The bright yellow paint, which is rare, the Imaluk paint, and the low mileage. And as such, I think this car is going to bring a surprising number for people who haven't been paying attention. So, JP, I send it back to you. Don't tell me you wouldn't drive this car because you used to. And I mean, like six months ago, you had a bright yellow Audi uh, that didn't even have a manual transmission. My God, it was a convertible. I'll give you that. But man, when you drove that car, it looked like you were at the beach in Miami in a banana hammock. Tell me I'm lying. 
I don't think that's an image anyone really wanted in their head. Uh, you know, if we're trying to get people to come back and watch the show, I, I think, you know, I, thanks for those new subscribers that came uh, during our break, but I think we just lost all of them. Uh, yeah, totally. That was a bad idea. Uh, this car, I, I look, I've driven these. These are terribly fun, uh, and you're absolutely right. That front heaviness. Uh, look, I, I'll tell you one thing. I remember when I got my first 99. Six C four S. I was pretty dang proud of Ooh, that car. Cool car. Uh, going over Blue It Pass uh, in Washington State. If uh, any of you have been lucky enough to be able to drive that road, um, you know I remember feeling pretty on top of the world in that car until some guy, um, a friend of mine, Sahan and his buddy, uh, blew by me in one of these. Uh, Ooh, and Sahan, so, say what's up, dude? Yeah, so I don't know if the reason why I don't like these is because I've had my butt handed to me. Uh, look, <laughs> it wasn't like he blew by, let, let's be honest. Like, we were clipping along, and I didn't... It wasn't like he just left me there. It wasn't like, whoa, I, I, you know, I'm in a CRX and some guy in a Lambo SVJ just, <laughs> you know, makes my Prius spin around. Um, no, but, you know, it was like I, I was – he made me work for it. And I was like, yeah. what, what? What's this thing? What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you don't want to be uh, blown by uh, – you don't want to be uh, – <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this car <laughs> – I, I, yeah, I don't know what to think. All I know is that for as many times as I've been beaten in a race by, if you want to call it that, uh, on the road by one of these, I've seen uh, them on the side of the road uh, as many oh, as often. These are not, yeah. from my experience, what I would consider something even remotely reliable. They have a lot of bugs. This engine has some pretty big... Uh, expensive components that tend to fail. Um, and uh, you guys probably out there know more about them than I certainly do. I'd like to hear your comments below. What what are yeah. the pain points on this car? I know like the V6 uh, has a bunch of like tame, timing chain issues and there's plastic in the powertrain. Anytime uh, a, a manufacturer uses plastic in a powertrain, you know you're going to have issues. Uh, yeah. So... You know, all that said, we're, I mean, what are these worth? Are they holding up? Is, th is this a yeah. Is this Yeah, JP, wrap your brain around this. Our car ends in three days, okay? Our car is sitting at $45,000 right now. Forty-five grand. I mean, you know, listen, most of these cars have over 100,000 miles on them, and most of them have been pretty beat up because, let's face it, the guy who's going to drive this car is usually a younger buyer, uh, that can afford one of these, and yet it's got some European cachet. Um, I love the bulging fenders on these. They they look the part, too. Um, but a lot of these cars can be had for uh, in the $30,000 range. Uh, but this car, again, with the low miles and the sort of rare shade, um, is already at forty five grand with three days to go. And, uh, and again, that's, I think, why I wanted to sort of show people, like, you know, these cars are bringing – real like legitimate collector money um and they continue to be a bright spot so uh without further ado jp i do think that this car will cap out pretty soon i don't think this car will bring sixty thousand dollars um again the economy and interest rates are not helping the situation um it, it, you know if if this were last year i'd say yeah this car might see 60 or sixty five thousand dollars but i think today at the beginning of the winter of 2023 I'm going to give you $53,000 and it sells at that price. Did you say there's don't a watch that video? Yeah. Yeah. Boy, one handed shifting. That just gives you oh an idea God. of the type of person. Look at, look at this, this, come on, it's bro. It's terrible. I watched that video and I meant to tell you, whatever you do, don't turn on the video. You're going to be so mad. Look at this like, guy. Come on, looks, dude. JP, JP, look through the steering wheel. He's wearing white leather penny loafers and black sweats. I mean, talk about a bro dozer. What How the? far back <laughs> is this guy leaning? Yes, like, seriously. is that is yeah. his seat completely reclined? I don't get Plus, what's does, happening. Doesn't it look like he's got a parakeet on his shoulder with a GoPro on its head? <laughs> yeah, well, and look at look at the way he's gripping the gear oh shift lever God. too. It's like, oh, dude, it's so bad, it's so bad, John. <laughs> Are you like a gear shift ninja? Is that what's happening? You're like, oh, I'm a kung fu shifty guy. 
Oh, oh my God. what a loser. So, and, you know, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. It's just, this he's is... gripping the steering wheel without putting his thumb like, around the steering wheel. He's doing it like uh, this, you know? Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Of, yeah, it's, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like Madonna is like strike a, strike a shift, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy, come on. That's Too why bad. I don't like these cars. That's yeah. why. It's not the car. Exactly. The car is a great it's the car. Community. But you you expect that guy to get out of this thing. And yep. do you want to pay $50,000 for people to expect, uh, you know, who was the guy? Borat. Who was the guy? What, the Borat guy. Not Borat, but what was uh, what was his? Ollie G is basically. Yeah, Ollie G. <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. who's, that, that's the license plate that you could get for this car. Uh, what was your number? Fifty-three thousand dollars, and I think it sells at that price. Yeah, what's it at now? You said forty-five. Forty-five. And it's got three ain't breaking fifty. I'm going forty-nine. Uh, oh, you're yeah, tripping, yeah. dude! I'm gonna win this one. Yeah. Start off the year with a W. Yeah, we shall see. What do you guys think? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, are you an Ollie G fan? Is this the kind of thing? Do you have the the big boy puffy pants? Do you have a lot of gold chains? Uh, oh. Bring a trailer has the car for you. Uh, but at least if you're, you know, you'll be able to escape people in C4s's if they try to catch you. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's go to a message. Uh, from our, from our friends, sponsor. Yeah, from yeah. our friends at God and Porsche. We'll uh, tell you, we're going to get, while we do that, we're going to get in the future machine uh, so we can find out what actually happened uh, in this car's auction right after this. Hey guys, I gotta tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you gotta call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas. And we're back, everyone. Welcome to the future. Thanks for hanging out, watching Bid Nerds. Hey, guys, if you haven't hit the subscribe, like, or notification button, now is the time. Uh, share this video or share one of our other videos and let people know that we're doing this every day for you guys. Uh, we love doing it for you. And, uh, okay, so let's get back to this Audi. Uh, Michael Deep, can you do a real quick refresher on what this is? And let's talk Art. about the results. I'm kind of surprised by this one. I <laughs> got you this time. Mm. Um, our 2008 Audi RS4, which is 38,000 miles out of Tracy, California, um, on Bring a Trailer with the single mass flywheel and slightly lowered suspension, the yellow, the rare yellow, Imola yellow paint. Um, John, I again, this is a car that I, I've just kind of always kind of kept an eye on as I look through all the cars every day, every week. Um, every year, these cars have been a bright spot for Audi in the used market pricing. And I thought this one had a chance to do some great things. Well, guess what it did? Uh, JP, I thought that this car could go as high as $53,000. You came in slightly more conservative at 49,000 bucks. Our car broke the bank when it sold on Sunday for $69,250 on 37 bids. Um, both of us should actually be ashamed because we were so far off, but I will go out on, a, on not very far on a limb and say this is a high water mark. Now, I know some cars have brought 60 and 65,000, but I feel like those have been cars with like, you know, less than 20,000 miles. This car has under 40,000 miles and is yellow and a lot of modifications. So, even though I know these bring good money, that number is shocking to me. I, I am really stunned. That's basically $70,000 for a 15-year-old Audi. You know what I'm saying? Like, like wrap your brain around that one. So, JP, if uh, you haven't fallen down on the floor and gone into cardiac arrest, come back and tell me what you think of this number. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Get your defibrillator out. Clear. <laughs> this is these are cool cars. I mean, look, I always ish all over Audis and stuff like that, and and, and particularly <laughs> these cars. I, I do like them. I do actually really like this car. I just think they're they're just not they're just not worth the money. I mean, almost seventy thousand uh, dollars. We just no. saw a seventy four Carrera, a real seventy four Carrera, barely bring yeah. that kind of money. Uh, you know, a couple 63. days ago, sixty three thousand yeah. dollars. Um, yeah. Now, the, that's not a real apples to apples comparison. This is a completely different car. This is definitely something that you would get in a compa- as a companion to a car like that. J- 
But, but JP, they're they're both yellow. Yeah, it would they would look really good <laughs> next to one another uh, in a garage. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, yeah. Look, I dude, seventy thousand dollars. You can get an R eight right? for that. Um, <laughs> I, I guess this you can carry around more guys if when you're going to the nightclub or to, you know maybe you can get all your buddies together and go frost your tips all together at the same time or or load the orange, trunk full orange. of all the all your uh, vape flavors you know i mean orange orange mocha frappuccinos and yeah, get into a gasoline geez, fight <laughs> right this car uh, I, look i i got to admit i would love to own one of these uh i would love this to be like a daily driver next to an air cooled 911 yes. that really would yes, be spectacular right. but if this car were like thirty thousand dollars which i think right. you know in at, at, for 30 grand you can go out and get the nicest E46 M3 or uh, even an E92 M3 or something like that. There's a bunch of really nice daily drivers that you can get that I think are better than something like this and, frankly, more reliable. These cars are known to have some issues, but I don't know. Whatever. Right. What do you guys think? Uh, let us know in the comments <laughs> below. Um, are we? Am I being too hard on the Audis? Is this car really that special that someone's going to spend this much money? Um, you know, I don't know. What those, do you guys think? Those those fender flares, JP. If you like box fenders on a 944 and E30 M3, there's another school like, like myself that loves mm -hmm. the swooping, bulging fenders of mm -hmm. uh, a turbo look Carrera. And I would love to park it next to maybe not a yellow one, but I'd love to have an RS4 in the garage where you've got these two cars with muscles. I mean, that, that I think I think it's a good looking car and probably fun to drive. But yes, they typically don't hold their value they're not the most reliable cars and um you can you can miss me with that yellow paint like i, I think it's cool but that's not the one i want for me i like the paint i mean i like the yellow car i guess i'm a kind of a tool shed but, douchebag on that regard. <laughs> but i guess you know looking at this car i don't it doesn't seem like i mean you mentioned the wider fenders and i know that you're right but certainly in the front the front Look yeah, at the front I ones. mean, no, I hear you, but like driving down yeah. the road, it looks like any other kind of a Audi A4 of the era, which is what a ten thousand dollar car. It just doesn't. Oh this yeah. doesn't look like a seventy thousand dollar car. It looks like a nice fair twenty thousand dollar car. That's it. That's um, a fair take. That's absolutely right. It, it, it. I, I get that they're kind of going for a Q car look, but um, you know, it's just uh, just the way it goes. Well, we're going to end the show. We can hear our my partner, Michael D., but we can't see him, so we're just going to look at me and this very pretty yellow, boxy, uh, bulgy car that Michael D. really likes. Uh, let us know what you guys think of the results. Was, was that crazy high, or is that really what these things go for? Would you pay that much for a, an old Audi like this? Um, what would you get instead of this car if you were considering an enthusiast car uh, for like half the money? Do you think you could get a car that kind of performs like this for less or what would be an alternative even at this money at almost seventy thousand uh, dollars let oh us know God. in the comments below make sure you hit the subscribe like and notification button and we are going to see you tomorrow on bid nerds thanks for hanging out guys Nerd! get those nerds